since uh, the trade deadline. The San Diego Padres, who stole the show. You acquired Josh Bell and Juan Soto, among others. Brandon Drury, before that, you got Josh Hader. Uh, A.J. Preller stole the trade deadline. But look at their number. Leave this up for a second, if you don't mind. 18 and 19, run differentials negative. They're scoring fewer runs. Their ERA is way high. And look at where they're sitting. They lost almost 10 games in the standings. Okay, that's 37 games. That's actually not a huge sample size, but that's negative. That's not good. Of all the storylines going on right now, as we get down to the wire, right? If the San Diego Padres do not make the playoffs, is that one of the most colossal late season collapses in, of recent memory? Well, I think so. I mean, we were so excited. The Padres, I, I'm, I'm a homegrown Padre guy. I love everything about San Diego. I couldn't have been more excited when this day right here happened and you finally gave Manny Machado the supporting cast around him that we thought needed to go. Manny's still been Manny since the All-Star, but he's been about the only guy doing it in that lineup. I was ready for Josh Bell, Juan Soto, and I've really been oh, slightly disappointed in the rotation. They haven't stepped up, and there's been some lopsided numbers and just not uh, not the leadership that I thought was there. And what I want to see in these last 20 games, a few guys, Darvish did it last night, take the bull by the horns, go out there and do it. But end of the day, the rest of this lineup has to give Manny some support if they're going to pull this thing off. Well, I think if you look, when you look at it from the standing standpoint, you can't really say that because they got these guys in order to, you know, make sure that, you know, they stay in that wild card race. Maybe not so much catch the Dodgers, but, you know, kind of solidify that spot. But what you can say is just how everyone's kind of performed coming in. And, you know, we've seen the Padres kind of do this again, you know, Prayler, you know, bringing in a bunch of guys, changing things up a little bit. And, and not really working out. When you look at the collection of talent they brought in, though, like it's hard to believe that all of them are struggling at the same time. It's like that's that is such bad luck right there. Bad luck. Anything. Can I throw this one date out? The day Fernando Tatis news broke that he's getting an 80 game suspension, and that was so deflating to the team. Of course, that was after the trade deadline. We were dreaming of Tatis being in that lineup. It, it, I know A.J. Preller went all in, and people might want to point and blame him, but the Tatis news was really a deflating moment of their year. Well, it was deflating, and, and for a good portion of time, seven to ten days there, it was, it was a bit of a distraction. You know, guys are having to answer questions about Tatis and stuff like that. But when you look at the talent of that team, like, with or without Tatis, they should be in that mix, which, I mean, they are. They're, they've been struggling a bit, just kind of hanging on by a thread. But the talent of that team, without him still, should be a playoff team. We've seen bits and pieces of it. Cronworth and, and, and you watch Will Myers is going good of late in the last couple weeks. He's starting to, to look like Will Myers. But the, just the jerks and profars had these moments where you're like, all right, this is his, his year. The supporting cast around, I mean, when the season started, we, we knew that Tatis may be coming back, but we know Manny is the, the guy out there and has been the guy. And Manny has been everything I think we could oh, uh, the MVP. Padres could ever have asked for yeah. what it now leans back to me is where's the leadership coming from you got a great manager but this game is about the players and these players in that clubhouse have got to come together I know there's been some deflating news and like you said AJ Preller can take or, or, or not take any of the blame it becomes about the players in the room they certainly have the talent in the room it's about figuring that out and getting some team chemistry going let it go sometimes sometimes too like you, we've seen in the past where a team brings in a player from, you know, uh, from a non-contending team, and he comes in and his game just like elevates to another level because there's something to play for. And then, you know, Soto comes over, Drew comes over, Bell comes over. All of a sudden, there's that pressure to win. Not saying like, you know, they're having a hard time, you know, figuring that out, but it's like all of them collectively struggling at the same time. Like, you're like, man, kind of uncle. Like, you know, these guys, they have to start stepping up a little bit to help. You know, like you said, the rest of that cast, like Cronenworth, Machado, you know, those guys, you know, to get to where they want to go to. I have a nasty habit. I bite my nails. I have a feeling A.J. Preller just picked up that habit. 
I think he's biting his nails. Look, if I'm in San Diego, I'm I'm getting the guys together. Like you said, you have a bunch of guys that maybe don't know each other in juries, and you're putting all these new things. I'm having show dinners. Yeah. Not getting out of hand. I'm sitting in the suite with the guys talking the game and building that camaraderie and talking about come, the next come day. Come to Jake PV's suite. It'll change your life. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I'm Sounds serious, like a demo. though. <laughs> it should be a demo. <laughs> That's a good demo. Great TV segment. Jake PV's suite. We'll do that a little later on. <laughs>